Good morning, Belmont UMC, and we are glad to be together in the house of the Lord to worship together, and with, we welcome those that are online with us. It's also wonderful to be together on Memorial Day Sunday, also Trinity Sunday, and so um, we are mindful of those who gave their lives so that we can be free. And so that is something that hopefully this weekend you, you remember those people that have been that gave their life in service to our country. And so we are here to follow Jesus, here to grow in our faith, and to make a difference. If you are able, will you please stand as we join together for the call to worship. God, sometimes we show up to worship, ready to encounter your presence. We know you are always with us. Sometimes we catch glimpses of you at home, work, or school, in a smile, in a gentle breeze, in the joy of being together. We know you are always with us. But God, we hesitate to encounter you in all your glory, afraid to be overwhelmed by your love and holiness. And yet, we know you are always with us in the fullness of your glory. Ready our hearts today to encounter more of your glory, your love, holiness, and glory that is always present with us. We come and today to enter the dance of all consuming presence of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. If you'll remain standing and join with us in our, our opening hymn, uh, number 61 in your hymnal, Come Thou Almighty King. If you'll remain standing and join with me in our opening prayer. O Lord of wonder, invite us into your joyful presence where you know and are known in each beginning, in all the ways you sustain us and in every redemption, that we may manifest your unity in all ministries you entrust to us. May we reflect your triune majesty in faith that acts, in hope that does not disappoint, and in love that endures. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. Please be seated. And today we're closing out another season uh, with the choir, and uh, I just want to take a moment to thank everyone who participates in the choir, so if we could just thank them all. We appreciate them every, every year to have their voices. It truly adds a joy to our service, um, and it's just great to have them. We will, of course, regroup after the summer and be back again. And if you're interested in singing next season, uh, please get with me, and we'll plug you in. So, uh, But for now, I hope you will join us even as you're sitting and worshiping as we sing the Lord's Prayer this morning. your kingdom come father let your will be done on earth as in heaven right here in my heart father let your kingdom come father let your will be done on earth as in heaven right here in my heart give us Thank you, choir and praise band. That was great. Our scripture reading this morning is from Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 17. So then, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it isn't an obligation to ourselves to live our lives on the basis of selfishness. If you live on the basis of selfishness, you're going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the actions of the body, you will live. All who are led by God's spirit are God's sons and daughters. You didn't receive a spirit of slavery to lead you back again into fear, but you received a spirit 
that shows you are adopted as his children. With this spirit, we cry, Abba, Father. The same spirit agrees with our spirit that we are God's children. But if we are children, we are also heirs. We are God's heirs and fellow heirs with Christ, if we really suffer with him so that we can also be glorified with him. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for morning. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. And we especially thank you this morning, God, as we remember this weekend, those who gave their lives for our country so that we might be free. Lord God, we give you thanks for them. For so many lives that over the course of time have been given. And God, we ask your blessings upon those families and that we will just not take for granted what you have given to us. And Lord God, we thank you for times to be together. We thank you for uniting of weddings that, that happen in weddings. We thank you for all the blessings that you have given to us this week. We thank you for the sun that has shone so brightly for a new life that continues to grow. We just give you thanks, God. Our list is huge. If we sat down to write all of the things that we have to be thankful for, our list would be long. Even though we might think that we're missing things, our list would still be long. You came to love us and to cherish us and you gave your very life for us because of that great love. And because of your love, the love of God, we can love one another. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you. May we be such that we are willing to entrust everything to you, trusting that you have it, that you will make a way where there seems to be no way. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And Lord, let us not take for granted that we can be in your presence. You are holy. And sometimes we put you in the same, and you want us to be holy as well, but sometimes we put you in the same category as us. And you are far greater than us. You are far greater as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit which are individually, individuals, and one together. Let us remember, God, to respect who you are, to cherish who you are, and whose we can be. So God, we lift up all our concerns this morning. We lift up those that have struggled through this week. We lift up those that housing is in question. We lift up those that have been frightened or have been abused somehow. Lord God, come and heal your people, heal your land. May we remember that you are our Lord, our God, and that the Holy Spirit is with us. And we pray together this morning, Lord, that wonderful prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Well, we invite you at this time to stand again as you're able, as we continue in worship, singing our song of preparation, Breathe on Me, Breath of God.
You may be seated. Good morning, Belmont. It is a great day to be in the house of the Lord this morning, and I'm so glad to see you all here in the sanctuary or by live stream. I'm Becky Bolts, Children's Coordinator, and we are taking a moment to check out our bulletin. So if you would take a look at your blue bulletins here this morning, we do have connect cards. If you are a first time guest, welcome. We are so glad to have you here. We have a welcome station. Please do uh, fill out your connect card and put in an offering plate pass it to an usher or see the welcome station. We would love to be connected to you. And on the back side for everyone, we have a place for comments and you can put these in the offering plate. We have prayer requests and praises and those get prayed for every Wednesday morning by a dedicated team. Uh, upcoming, um, tomorrow is a special holiday. It is Memorial Day and our office will be closed tomorrow in uh, honor of Memorial Day. Uh, we do need someone to assist on Thursday from 10 to 3 just to uh, sit in the office, answer phone calls, uh, welcome people who come to the door. If there is no one, this is kind of a last call situation, if there's no one who um, steps up to help in the office on Thursday, the office will also be closed on Thursday. So Monday uh, we will be closed formally and then uh, if we do not have someone to help assist on that day, we will also be closed Thursday. Next Sunday is a special Sunday. It's Senior Sunday. Give me whoop whoop. Oh, there we go. So uh, we are going to celebrate we, our seniors. We have Christian and Nora um, and their families have been dedicated uh, to serving in Belmont for years. And so please do help fill out their baskets bring in cards, there are information sheets, there's pictures and information about the things that they need for their continual studies as they move on into college. So please do um, screenshot that, and that list and bring those things in to fill their baskets for next Sunday. Also coming up in June, woo, 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 good day, mate. We're traveling to Australia. And we are so excited to get it all started. So please, please get the word out. Make sure that everyone you know, your neighbors, your friends, your family know that we've got a kids camp coming up for them on June 17th through the 20th, 6.30 to 8. And it's free, 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 free. And who doesn't love a free kids camp? All right, so we do have a volunteer sign up. Thank you to everybody who has volunteered. Uh, we do have a few more holes for that. So uh, we could use a games helper, crafts helper, um, and uh, just a, another group helper. We've got some leaders there, but uh, we could use uh, just a little bit more staff. If you're like, hey, I don't wanna commit to every week, but I could be here on Monday. We could use subs because things always come up every year where somebody gets sick or there's an incident that happens, things that happen. So please do uh, let me know if you can help. And we do have a snack donation list there. I've already seen people sign up to bring in snacks. So if there is something that you can bring that in, please bring it in the week before VBS. Uh, that way we have our snacks ready to go. Also. Let's give a big round of applause to our tech, sound and tech team. They're the ones behind the scenes doing the day in, day out. If they do their job well, they go unnoticed, but a bunch, right? It's always when something goes wrong that, you're, that you become aware that, oh, there are slides there. And as you can see, there have been slides rotating all during announcements. And so uh, to get things up like our live stream, our sound, our video, all of those things takes a lot of hard work. And we have BBS information up on the website. So if you haven't checked out the website, please do. Uh, that's a great place. And thank you to Miss Janet 
uh, for getting all of those things up on the website for us. So I think that is all of the announcements that I have here this Sunday. And we are ready to move into our children's sermon. So if you're a child, young or old, come and see me. Come on down. Someone told me it's decoration day, so I am decorating. I don't know what I'm decorating for. Maybe it is Valentine's Day. Maybe it is St. Patrick's Day. But I am decorating for decoration day. Oh, Christmas. Christmas is around the corner. Can't forget about all of the, wait a second, what? It's not St. Patrick's Day? No, that was my birthday. Hmm. Well, what am, I, what am I decorating for? Memorial Day? Oh, I do have one more scarf in here. Uh, will this work? Will this work for decoration day? Okay, but Memorial Day? Well, Memorial Day. I don't know what Memorial Day's for. What's Memorial Day for? Anybody know? Ah, it's for the soldiers who died to help save our country. So it is a day of remembrance and honor. Have you ever heard that, you know, all gave some, some gave all. Have you ever heard that phrase before? Yeah. All gave some, some gave all. It means that there were people who enlisted to help protect and serve this country, and some of them lost their lives for that. Some lost everything that they had to do that. Right? So we celebrate tomorrow, we celebrate Memorial Day as a country to honor those people. But you know what? We can learn something out of the Bible about this too. Because in the Bible it says there is no greater love than someone who would lay their life down for their friends. Let me say that again. There's no greater love than someone who would lay their life down for their friends. What does that mean? What does that mean? Yeah, if you are sacrificing something for someone else, does that mean you love them? Yeah, when you put your needs down and you help someone else with their needs, you're putting them first above yourself. And that's sacrifice. Gee, hmm, I know somebody. It's talked about a lot in the New Testament who gave everything and sacrificed himself for us. That's right, Jesus. Jesus paid the ultimate sacrifice and laid his life down for our sins. And so we can model like Jesus and lay ourselves down for others. So let's pray about that. Dear God, thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you for sending him, that he paid the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. Thank you for all the men and women who paid the ultimate sacrifice for us in this country. God, I, help, I pray that we can learn from you and we can learn from them to sacrifice our needs and wants for the benefit of other people. Help us to make this world a better place and to sacrifice ourselves for the benefit of many. In Jesus' name, amen. 
All right, let's learn more about being a good friend and sacrificing for others. Thank you, Bucky. Our second scripture this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 6. In the year of King Uzziah's death, I saw the Lord sitting on a high and exalted throne the edges of his robe filling the temple. Winged creatures were stationed around him, each had six wings. With two they veiled their faces, with two their feet, and with two they flew about. They shouted to each other, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of the heavenly forces. All the earth is filled with God's glory. The door frame shook at the sound of their shouting, and the house was filled with smoke. I said, mourn for me, I'm ruined. I'm a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people with unclean lips, yet I've seen the King, the Lord of the heavenly forces. Then one of the winged creatures flew to me holding a glowing coal that he had taken from the altar with tongues. He touched my mouth and said, see, this has touched your lips. Your guilt has departed and your sin is removed. And then I heard the Lord's voice saying, whom should I send, and who will go for me, for us? I said, I am here. Send me. Here ends, ends the reading of the word. Thanks be to God. As you read this in different translations, it, it says, well, and it says here, the edge of his robe filling the temple. I don't know what, what you imagine might be the temple of the Lord, but I imagine if it's in heaven that it's an immense temple. And to think about the train of his robe, and so um, we're doing materials today, both children's moments and me. Um, but if you think about the train of his robe, you have no idea what that means, and that it would be enough that it would fill the entire temple. God's train of his robe being immense. And so we, we we may think that this is a long piece of material, but it doesn't even begin to fill anything in our sanctuary. And so when you take this piece of material and you imagine filling our temple, filling this place with the train of God's robe, imagine what that would be. Just imagine that this doesn't even take up the little space right here. And so it is immense. Isaiah sees this. He sees, he gets a glimpse of heaven. He has a vision, and he's able to see a glimpse of heaven. He doesn't see God's face, but he sees the train of, just the train of his robe filling the temple with God, and it fills it with God's glory. Isaiah realizes pretty quickly that he's not even worthy to be seeing this. He realizes he isn't worthy. And he says, I'm a man of unclean lips. And I've seen the king, the Lord of the heavenly forces. And immediately one of the seraphs comes with, uh, with coal that has been, is on fire, is hot. That piece of coal, you know how coal kind of, when it's burning it, you can see the little red flickers of that. He comes with that coal and touches Isaiah's lips, and Isaiah is made without, his sins are forgiven from him. And he says, see, this has touched your lips. Your guilt has departed, and your sin is removed. And Isaiah's sin is removed. Isaiah is the prophet, and we have, there's many wonderful scriptures that come out of the book of Isaiah. 
And Isaiah follow is, 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 speak, is experiencing this right after King Uzziah died. And the country's kind of torn apart because they have lost their king. And Isaiah gets a glimpse of heaven. Gets a glimpse of heaven. God's presence. And he hears the voice of the Lord. So there's different things that happen in this vision. He smells the smoke. He sees. He hears from the, from the voice of heaven from God. Different things of his senses are alivened because he experiences the heavenly space with all of his senses. What an incredible vision that he has. What an incredible vision, and yet he doesn't see God's face, but he sees God's glory in the heavens. Moses had a similar experience. You know, Moses went up and he saw the burning bush and he was confused by the burning bush because the burning bush was burning, but it didn't burn. Does that make sense? He could see it on fire, but it didn't go away. It was there and he was curious. And God speaks to him in that, through that, that experience and said that he wasn't to look in a certain direction but that God was present there and that he needed to take off his shoes for it was holy ground. Remove your sandals, for this is holy ground. Where the Lord is, is holy. Where the Lord is, is holy. And so when we think about the Lord, we think about the temple, that we can't even con comprehend 100% what it would be like. But Isaiah sees that glimpse. We are reminded again that, the, that God is holy. This being Trinity Sunday, there's God in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God is holy. Sometimes I think it, God gets, we, we put God on a plane that's equal to us. We just set God along with us. And the Lord is available to each one of us that we can call in his name. He's present. But God is more than a person. God is the Holy One above all things, the creator of all things. And so there needs to be a reverence and a respect and, and that type of, of being as we approach the presence of God. As we approach God, there should be a respect of appro approaching God. There should be a reverence as we approach God. And the presence of God is still here with us. I remember, um, and I probably shared this, I've shared this with different people, so I probably shared it before with you, but we had an opportunity to worship in, in at kind of in between appointments. We had an opportunity to worship at a church called Christian Assembly in um, Columbus. And Christian Assembly was a, had a school for the arts, and um, there was, their worship was always uh, very uh, worshipful, but with dance and, and banners and flags and various different things, but it was done really at top excellence. And they had a small chapel that they, based on the 24 hours of prayer, would often be open for people to come and they would pray and they would worship the Lord in that small chapel. And we would lead one of the worship times, Mark and I, and I would notice that when we entered the door to the chapel, it felt different than the outside did. We entered the door of the chapel and there was something there that was different and it was because people had been praying and worshiping God in that space and God was still resting in that space as, you're, as God is worshiped and praised. There's something that changes in the very atmosphere of the place. We learned a lot about worship by fellowshipping with, with everyone there. But what it reminds us is that we need to be in reverence, in expectation. Do you expect God to show up? Do you expect to encounter God in worship? Do you expect that God is present? Because God is still here. 
Jesus left the Holy Spirit here as our advocate, do you expect? Do we come with expectation? And as we worship God, do we expect to feel God's presence? God is present. And so we need to have that, that feeling and that, that understanding of the reverence and, and honor and glory that we give to the one who created us who breathed breath of life into us, that we expect that, in that presence and we expect to encounter the Lord God himself. I think there's probably folks that have stories about how God's presence could be felt in times that you have been praying, in times that you've been in a worship service and you could feel the presence of God. As Mark and I were at a worship conference close to Washington, D.C., and the 2019 General Conference was meeting on the other coast, on the West Coast. And I, in right in the middle of worship, the Lord just was speaking to me, you need to pray. You need to pray for the bishops. Pray. I hadn't looked at the agenda. I didn't know what was happening that day. But God just laid on my heart to pray. God's presence was there. It leans on us sometimes to do a certain thing. You need to do X, Y, and Z. If we're paying attention and we're listening, we can feel God's presence and God's nudge for us to do something and to respond. God's presence is still here. And sometimes it's to beckon us to pray for someone. Sometimes it might just put a burden on our soul to go help somebody that that we just, we just are burdened to do that or sit down and listen. God's presence to guide us and to direct us, God's presence. So living in God's presence is, is what we should strive for. And just to imagine what, I, what um, Isaiah saw that day. He saw the Lord sitting high and exalted on a throne. And the edges of his robe filled the temple. What an amazing sight. I don't know if you would be scared. I don't know if you would just be amazed and in true awe and wonder. Because God's so much bigger than we are, and yet God loves us so much. He created us in his image. It's a good reminder for us as we, um, even as we celebrate, as we celebrate Memorial Day even, to remind us that there has been a God. Our nation was founded on God. And our nation desperately needs the Lord. The presence of the Lord is here, is with us. Thanks be to God. And thanks be to his his, his word. Let us pray. Lord God, we, as we read the scripture, we see, we see something that you've made available for us to see. We see that the temple was filled with your robe, that the earth is filled with your glory, and that the beings surrounding you we're saying to each other, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. We see through Isaiah that, that it wasn't just a seeing and a sighting, but the door frame shook. There could be heard sounds. What an amazing experience that you give to us that we can read. But what an amazing experience has happened today when we strive to be in your presence, O oh Lord, that means falling on our knees or getting down low to be in your presence, to listen for your word, to know that you are present, to know that you love us unconditionally, and you would give your very life for each one of us. You are holy, O oh Lord God. We praise you for who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See the 
Almighty God, through Jesus you have opened the way of eternal life to every nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Spread abroad this gift throughout the world by preaching the gospel, that it may reach the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. As you remain standing, we invite you to join with us in our closing hymn this morning. Before we do the benediction, I invite you 
following the benediction, if you want to have a seat for the postload, you won't be disappointed. So now as we close, we are reminded that we are in God's presence and it is holy to have reverence and, and holiness ourselves. Go in peace and in love and in joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Rob, for being on the drums. You may be seated if you're...